we're already beyond what the earth can sustain. And if we continue to supply middle class lifestyles for the many billions of people who want to have that kind of yeah. comfort, then we're going to go way over the edge. We are nearly 98% dependent on imported oils in Europe. And it's not when it runs out, it's the moment when supply can no longer meet demand. That's when the economic volatility kicks in. So Europe is, is really quite frightened from an energy security perspective on this. My car and your car too already runs on bioethanol, a fuel made from plants. Currently there's more than 3% in your tank when you fill up at the pumps, but by 2020 that's going to rise to 10%. So it's going to be made in vast quantities at places quite local to here, like this. The factory in question is Vivergo Fuels on the Humber Estuary. It's a focal point for a biofuels industry surrounded by questions and controversies. Like most consumers, they want to know really with bioethanol, what's the difference between a good one and a bad one? Well, a good one is one that reduces greenhouse gas emissions, doesn't affect food security, that provides a fuel that's usable without breaking your engine. People get pretty upset about that. But this is not just a fuel issue, it's a food issue too. This is DDGS. Food for cows. It just tastes like breakfast cereal, really. Yeah. And guess where it's going to be made? At this place. And they'll be using this. Food and fuel, all made in the same factory. But at what cost? Trouble is now we've got so many cars and so much demand for liquid fuel, it requires quite a bit of land. And instead of just using that wheat to feed animals or to feed people, we're using it to do exactly the same as we were doing before, plus extra, because now we're putting fuel in the cars as well. The wheat absorbs the CO2 out of the atmosphere to start with. We recycle it back round through the engine and that CO2 goes back up and back into the plant again. On average, we're over 50% more efficient on carbon than petrol. So why has it not been done before? But it has been done before. If you go all the way back, all the way back into the Model T Ford, that ran on ethanol. For me, it's about that excitement you get in the car. You want the car to make you smile every day. I'm concerned maybe I'm not going to be able to find that performance. I think you want to come outside and look at what I've got here. This is a Bentley Super Sport convertible, right? 600 brake horsepower, yet it can run on up to 85% bioethanol right. with no loss of performance. OK, I'll have one. OK. What we need to do is open up a discussion about how to do biofuels well so that we don't jeopardise food security right, okay. and yeah. that we maintain ecosystem services. I tend to believe that the arguments in favour of biofuels supporting food production as opposed to being competitive with food production tend to win out. Cars have been part of our lives for over a hundred years, but what does the future of motoring hold for us all? Are we all going to be driving cars driven on fuel that's been made in places like Vivergo? Are we really? Mm -hmm.